Hey young scientists, I really want to get started to graphing the data that I just collected. So this video will teach you how to graph that data if you can follow along and I know it's going to be fast but it's a video so you can pause the recording and go at your own pace. I'm going to do two different graphs. One here is of uh, non-continuous data and the other is going to be of continuous data. So let's start with this non-continuous data here. I have um, a science project on the amount of ice that are uh, ingredients that I use to melt ice. Here's my control, ice by itself, sugar, and then uh, ice melted with salt. Uh, right here what I can do is uh, merge the cells. So click on here and merge the cells here and then make sure it's aligned uh, left and right and up and down. And I can type in what I want here that um, is going to uh, describe what's in these columns here. I chose it to say time it takes uh, to melt ice with various ingredients. And I spelled ingredients wrong, but I also I want to put the units here. It's always important to have the units in the t um, title, but not in the data section here. Uh, We'll see why later it's not going to calculate if uh, it has minutes in the data. Um, so here is a way to do a spell check. Click review and check the spelling. Ingredients can change it to that. Yeah, okay. So uh, I also am, should label the trials up here. So that's trial one, trial two. And here's another trick. If you click on both of them in a sequence, two things in a sequence, the computer knows we're going to increment uh, from one to two, so increments of one. What I can do is uh, highlight both of them and wait, f uh, hover my cursor on here, and wait till it turns into that cross, and then move the cursor over by dragging it this way. This is called a fill, and the computer knows, hey, I'm going to increment this by one all the way to trial five. Pretty cool stuff. Um, next thing is average because I want to average all these trials to find out the average time it takes for the control to melt. So I click average here and um, put a uh, extra column here that says average. Uh, typing an equal sign because that's going to show me um, uh, calculation and there's a bunch of different after I type equal there's a bunch of um, different symbols, uh, formulas that I can use. I can do sum and get the sum of something or I can do type average and get the average of certain data. When I press average, I open the parentheses and, it, and it's going to say I have to put the average of certain numbers. So I can click on um, these numbers that I want the average for, close the parentheses and press enter and it calculates the average for me. Pretty cool. Now let's do the fill thing again because what the computer is going to know is that I'm going to co collect the average of here for all of these values and then put the average here for all of these values. Let's see if the computer knows to do this by using the fill again, hovering my mouse over here, I'm waiting for it to have a um, uh, that uh, symbol, that uh, cross symbol, pull it down here and indeed yes I get the average. If I double click here this says I'm getting the average of this data here and you can change it after you know you can move this here and it'll collect different averages depending on the average of which numbers you want. Press enter and then it calculates it for you right there. So now I have um, the data that I want there. Pretty cool stuff. Um, you can change things to make it look nice by adding borders like that and adding borders here. Uh, it, since these are column headings, you usually want to make them bold. And if you want to get fancy, you can change the colors of these here. So make it a shade because these are my column headings. So it really makes a uh, professional touch there. Now, when, now this is my chart and I want to make it into a graph. So in science, we want to make the data easy to see. So that's why we are particularly excited about putting things in graphs. We are not normally interested in these trial data. We just, in science, use the averages because that's the data that we are looking for that we can uh, that uh, we can assess. So um, this data here is normally called raw data and then when we graph the average versus the control that's what we're gonna uh, uh, control sugar and salt that's what we're gonna want to see. So I'm gonna take 
these column headings and put it into another um, another sheet. So here's my sheet and press paste here and go back here and just take the averages. That's what we we're particularly interested in and paste the average here. So there's the average here. Notice it says reference because I took the average uh, and I did a calculation. Uh, it's no longer seeing where that calculation is. So I have to do this special thing here called paste the values. So it knows that I'm just pasting the values there. If I just paste the values, I, there's going to be some reformatting that I have to do, which is totally fine. And I can easily do that there. We no longer have that REF um, error. So since I have this average here, uh, this is what the data that I want to graph. So uh, we can insert a um, column graph. And we're doing this because this is uncontinuous data. No, control, sugar, and salt are separate categories. So we're averaging the time it takes for these things to melt up. Um, their average times and uh, this data is a non-continuous data. Let's say I had continuous data such as time that, or number of days. Those are numbers that uh, we are going to discuss later, ways to graph them later. So non-continuous data is in uh, columns usually. So we have a uh, column graph and there's different ones you can choose from. I'm going to choose this one because it looks particularly interesting like that and, I, and it shows the control sugar and salt, salt very easily. I don't have to have this legend because there's not more than one color so I can press delete for that legend and I never want to show a graph that has no x and y axes labeled so the best way to do that is go to layout and title the axis. There's a way to do the horizontal axis which is the x axis and the y axis x-axis should be your uh, independent variable, the variable that you change, while your y-axis should be the dependent variable, the thing that changes. So the amount of time would be here. So let's label our axes. Here is um, the type of type of ingredient there and then on the y-axis you can have a rotated title and say time it takes to melt and it's going to always include your units so we know what we're talking about for your chart title you should always have a chart title uh, this one you can do above the chart or or any other place and click on your title. Boom! I did that there and again we want to review and do a spell check. Okay, and it changed the shape of my chart. If you don't like the shape, you can change the shape of the inside of the chart and the outside of the chart like so. And I'll make, do that. Okay, uh, when you're when you are ready to uh, make a title of your entire project, make sure that you have a title for your graph and also a title for your chart. So I'm going to use the same title here to put above my chart. And I want the title to be that big. So uh, I go home and uh, uh, I can merge the cells. I can make sure that it's centered, aligned up and down and left and right. And then uh, paste uh, my... Oh, it's not pasting so let's control copy and click in there and then paste okay uh, I just had to do it again I'm not sure why it didn't work uh, but I'm gonna center it here there and uh, uh, you can change it make it bold make it make it larger so it's easier to see Okay. And so my, all those things are, are there. Uh, I have a title for my chart and a title for my graph. Uh, when you're ready to print, make sure that you 
go to the view and you're you're able to make sure that you see the page layout to make sure that it prints what you can do is you can go to this page break preview and this dialog shows up showing that you can change the page breaks by moving around this this line here now the way it's set up right now this half of the graph is going to go on one page this half is another page so you need to move it over so that they all show up in one nice page and then you can uh, see this full screen to make sure that it is graphed correctly um, so that it's all on the same page yeah. you don't want half of the graph on one page and half on the other and then you are ready to print so in summary what we did is we looked at um, uh, making sure to calculate averages but in your raw data we saw how to make it professional by putting um, grid line putting grid lines and headings and then we also were able to create a bar graph with non-continuous data uh, making sure that you label your axes you have a title on your chart and on your graph and it looks nice and professional Good luck on making this graph. The next video will show you how to do it with continuous data. I'm sure you'll do fine and make your graphs look professional. Good luck.